All right, by now we already know how to add columns to our pages and how we can fill those columns in multiple ways with text, and we can also do that with images. So I'm here in our offering memorandum on section 2, page 12, and we're looking at a text frame, right? Because I can click on this text frame, and inside of this text frame we can see that it has multiple columns. That separates the text as well as some of the images in here. So what I want to do is go to the prior page, page two, or uh, section two, page 11. And I have some plain text here. And what I want to do is divide this text into about four columns. So to do that, now that the page has already been created, what I need to do is bring up the text options dialog box. And I can do that simply by hitting control B on my keyboard to bring up the text frame options. Or I can go up to the object menu and select te text frame options. Now you may be wondering why you find that un under the object menu and not so much the type menu. That's because as frames they can be used for multiple options. So we typically find that under the text frame. Now here I have general where I can set my columns. I can set inset spacing and vertical justification. Ignore text wrap and preview. I want to make sure for this I have preview selected. And I'm going to come up to the number of columns. Oh, hang on just a second. I forgot to do one important thing and that is to select my text frame. That's important. You want to make sure you have that selected. I'm going to hit control B again to bring this up. Now that that is selected, I've got my preview box selected, and I'm going to add four columns to this page. And we can see that InDesign will add the four columns, divide this information. Here I can specify the width, and the width is specified. I can change that, obviously, by going up and down. I can change the gutter. The gutter is basically going to determine what that inset space is within my columns, but I'll go ahead and shrink that back down to 2.5 is about right. Now, if I wanted to, I could select two more options here, fixed column width and balanced columns. Now, fixed column width will basically constrain the proportions of these columns should I decide to grab a node and shrink this a little bit then it would keep the columns the same width no matter where I moved it. Balance columns is something new in CS5. It wasn't there in CS3, and this is a great little feature because if you had text that you flowed or that ran from one column to the next, and let's say the next column wasn't very even like we have here, then we could come in and select balance columns and InDesign would automatically balance out those columns so your text look pretty even. But on this page they're pretty even just the way they are so I'll go ahead and leave that unchecked. And the inset spacing allows us to inset the text. Now we have a little link icon here if I unselect that we can see that they're unlinked and then I'd be able to set the top bottom left and right spacing individually but I typically leave those linked. And what this allows me to do, if I set it and you look at my text, then around the entire border of this column, it insets that text. Let me click it again and just kind of watch as that text comes in. And this is really great if you actually have visible lines, like you are creating a form and your border is going to be printable, then it would make sense to set a little bit of inset spacing to remove your text away from that border. Then we also have vertical justification. And by default, it will align to the top, but we can choose center, bottom, or justify. And justify will justify all this text spacing all so that it fills all the way in, in inside of these columns. I'll go ahead and choose top for now. Then paragraph spacing limit, which comes into play when we select justify. So if I select justify and I come in and shrink these, then I can really 
narrow down how that gap is going to look when I'm trying to justify the page. And here I can ignore text wrap, which if I had a uh, just a single uh, text frame and uh, one huge long line of text, that it would just show that long line of text without wrapping around the frame itself. So something we'll probably never use. But here within the text frame options, we can apply columns to our text frame. So we're not necessarily have to, or we're not necessarily dependent on our page columns to do that. And these are the multiple options that we can play with within side of those frames.